Hello, everyone. Welcome to In the Neighborhood with your hosts, Tim Johnson and Stacy Borho. Together, they are finding out what makes the heart of the Heartland Beat. They sit down with people in your community that lead organizations, businesses, and government. You'll learn who they are and what they're involved in and why. They are the people in your neighborhood. It's In the Neighborhood with Stacy Borho and Tim Johnson. My name is Tim Johnson, and this is Stacy Borro. Hey, Tim. Welcome. Happy December. Yeah, December is a good month. It is a great month. Somebody has a birthday coming. Up. I know. I'm gonna get older. <laughs> oh, I don't want to talk about celebrate it. Celebrate your life. That'd be <laughs> awesome. All right. Today we're talking with Rich Drager. Welcome, Rich. How Thanks. are you? Very good. Thanks for the invite. Um, we were just talking beforehand. Um, we had you on, I think every year that we've been broadcasting, you've been here and you're, you've been kind of a keystone for our year. <laughs> yeah. So it's the end of the year. You got to have somebody on from the Salvation Army. Well, it's not that. It's just we, when we think of Christmas, we think of Salvation Army right. a lot of times. Right. And I, I know you guys do stuff all year round, mm -hmm. but really think about you guys out there because your bell ringers are out there. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a busy, the, probably from mid-November to mid-January is probably our busiest fundraising time of the year. And we certainly do a lot of events during that time frame too. But you're right, we do, the money we raise this time of year helps us feed people in the middle of the summer. So it's, it's a very important campaign and a, an important time of year for us. So what does the Salvation Army do, just to educate those who sure. don't know? Well, in Peoria, there, you know, the neat thing about the Salvation Army is we are in every zip code in the United States. So that doesn't mean we have an actual facility, but we have a representative, maybe a police chief, a local pastor, or somebody that can write a voucher to cover an expense, an emergency expense for somebody. But where we do have locations, we just try to fit into the community. So whatever the unmet needs are that the Salvation Army feels they can carry the ball for, they do that. So here in the Peoria area on our downtown campus, we have a child care center, which actually is one of, the, it is the longest continuously running one in the city of Peoria. So all the way back to 1932 through today, we've offered that uh, to people in need in the Peoria area. We have soup kitchen, where we do not only a lunch program, which is open to, to the public, uh, but we also do a dinner program. Uh, we have a variety of shelter programs. We have a family shelter where we have intact families or single women or women with kids. And then we do an emergency overnight program as well for homeless men, one of only a couple in the area. So that's a very important piece of what we do. And then recently, I guess it would be fairly recently, since about 2011, we'd offer, we offer veteran services. So we have a veterans outreach center. And other than the veterans administration, the Salvation Army is one of the largest providers of veteran services in the state of Illinois, a fact that not many people know. Um, and, it's, and it's like a lot of things with the Salvation Army, it's, it's word of mouth. Sure. So if one of you happen to have a veteran in your family and they got assistance, they might tell their next friend, hey, go here and they can get you started. And then we have our core community center, which is very busy this time of year because that's where we do our annual toy shop. They also have a variety of programs that they do, including I think the last time we were here, we talked about they were just launching their fine arts academy. So they have a, a performing arts academy where they teach kids how to play musical instruments, not just the traditional brass that the Army's known for, but guitar, piano, uh, vocal stuff. And so it's really a neat thing. And all of those programs that I just mentioned, with the exception of the child care, are absolutely free. Wow. So we're able to do that only because of the generosity of the community. Wow. And so what are we doing with the toys then? I don't know if I know a lot about that. Sure. So each year the Salvation Army works with the Marine Corps Reserves who do the Toys for Tots. Okay. And so we have a great relationship with them. We are their largest giveaway partner. So they give some to the Children's Hospital. They have other groups that they work with at this time of year, but we're their largest. So just in the past week or two, we've been signing people up who need toys or food baskets or coats for kids, which is a big program this time of year that we do. And then we have a, a date coming up here in a couple of weeks in December where they get appointment time. So on a given day they come and we actually have personal shoppers that take them through our gym at the Core Community Center. And we know that they have an eight-year-old boy and a 10-year-old girl and we just take them around to the individual tables that we have set up and help them select toys for their kids or grandkids. And it's really a, it's a neat experience, not only for those of us who work for the Army, mm -hmm. but for the volunteers that come. We can't do what we do without volunteers. And so that's a great opportunity for, uh, you'll see families, you'll see businesses, church folks get together 
together. And it's just neat to see a smile on a mother or a father or a grandparent's face that now they know their kids or grandkids are going to get a toy where maybe they weren't uh, prior to, to reaching out to us. That's so great. So can you get me a box, a Toys for Tots box? <laughs> we can, we can, we can make sure we do that for you. Awesome. And that's really how it works because there are so many companies and businesses and churches and folks that just say, hey, we want to put a box out and, and we would encourage folks they can do their own mini collection. And uh, it does go to help kids that more often than not would not have much of a, uh, a toy filled or an enjoyable Christmas if they come down and look under the Christmas tree and there's not much there. There's, there's a good amount of those boxes around, so if you ever see those, you know, it's a great place to give. That would so. be a great, great And place. ideally, what are you wanting to see in those boxes, just so we can educate? Well, I know for, for Toys for Tots, you know, they ask it to be unwrapped toys because there are a variety of toy programs that get done. Same as people that might just make direct donations to us as well because there are a variety of programs. So there's a program that's done at the uh, Civic Center where toys are provided from a different means. Our toy shop is provided largely from Toys for Tots, and then we also do what we call Adopt-A-Family, and that would be where uh, Stacy would call up and say, hey, I understand you have an Adopt-A-Family, I'd like to adopt them, and then you would be responsible for getting the toys for a specific family, and that sometimes has even a little more uh, meaning to the donors because they kind of can identify with, oh, a, a seven-year-old boy and an eight-year-old girl and a, and a single mother. So that, that's kind of a neat program too. But generally an unwrapped toy, and it, and it can be everything from a matchbox card, you know, to something extravagant. Um, our toy shop basically works with kids from, you know, infancy up till about 12 or 13 years old. So that's the other thing, you know, if you think about older kids, I mean, it's a little bit harder to get them yeah. gifts, so sometimes it might just end up being a gift card or something like that where they can go with their parents and buy whatever they need. You know, it may, we may not think a pair of jeans is really that cool of a Christmas gift. I remember getting tube socks every year when I grew up <laughs> from grandma, but, but when you need it, that's nice to be able to have that gift card or whatever and go out and, and get what you truly need, you know. It's nice to have toys, it's nice to have gadgets, but sometimes it's really what you need rather than what you want. Sure. Talk about a heartwarming um, volunteer opportunity is adopt a family. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I could see huge impacts in, in both sides. Lives. Yeah, because yeah, there you kind of get a little more of a, a connection with the family. Um, and, you know, not that the toy shop isn't important, and certainly people that support the toy shop by donating toys also find themselves volunteering because that's kind of neat too. That's, that's the one thing that amazes me. You take, we, we signed up, I think, close to 4,000 people in the last couple of weeks, and My that's goodness. a lot of kids. Last year we gave out over 12,000 toys to kids in need. But to be able to take a, a parent around or a grandparent around that might feel like, gosh, I had to get help to provide a good Christmas for my family. Mm -hmm. It really takes a lot of that burden off and, and we have officers there, you know, dressed up and, you know, Major Jesse likes to wear his silly Santa hat that bounces back and forth. And we just try to make it a fun time for the folks while they're there. And so it's one less burden they have to worry about at Christmas time. Sure, sure, the stresses of that. So you're feeding them and providing toys. Right, absolutely. The the food box program we do in conjunction with the Journal Star, their Christmas fund raises money also. And that's the other thing to point out, you know, a lot of times the Salvation Army gets, I don't know if credit's the right word, but gets the notoriety for it. And it's really done in partnership with so many great groups like the Marines, like the Journal Star Christmas Fund. Uh, right on down the list, uh, Coats for Kids is done with OSF and with uh, WEK. So there's just a lot of entities that come together to hopefully fill in the gaps for those families that maybe aren't as blessed as you know yours or mine and try to make it a, a little less stressful time for them because the holidays can be stressful. You know, Do I get the right present for them? And then if you're in a situation where it's a choice between putting food on the table or getting a toy for Junior, you know, we don't want people to have to be in that position if they don't have to be. Right. It's one thing I love about talking with you and, and the Salvation Army is the humbleness of the organization. It's mm -hmm. like... Um, some of the organizations are like, it's about us. But what you guys do is more of, it's all about the community. Mm -hmm. It's about us as, as people, which is pretty impressive. Right. I think, you know, for someone who works on the, on the public relations and development side, I always try to make sure that we kind of reflect the light back, you know. So if you're a donor, if you're a business, if you're a church that is doing something to benefit, 
you're not really doing it to benefit us as an organization. You're doing it to benefit the people that we serve. And sometimes those people don't have the ability to do that. So we're a conduit, you know, to enable them to help people. Um, I joke, and I'm not so sure my bosses would like me to say it, but I joke that I work for an organization that would like to go out of business someday. But, you know, it's, <laughs> since the beginning of time, the poor have been with us. Yeah. And unfortunately, there, there are always going to be people who are just kind of on that edge. You know, we had a family this, this past year that we helped that, you know, they talk about how many families that are on the lower end of the economic scale are really a couple of checks away from being in a bad spot. And we had this family that was like that. The dad had a job. They had a special needs daughter and another teen. He ended up losing his job. It was a family-owned business that closed. And within two months' time, their savings was gone, mm -hmm. and they were out of a house. So they ended up living in our family shelter. Mm -hmm. And it was a terrible transition for them. The mother said, hey, I've, I've, we've never been homeless in our lives. And she said, you know, it doesn't take much to knock you on your bottom. And she goes, thank goodness that the Salvation Army was there to kind of help us. And really, it was them doing the work. It was just that, again, we were able to provide that little bit to keep them from falling through the cracks. And, you know, they're one of our nice success stories. They moved out of the shelter after about three months, and we just heard that after the first of the year, they're going to be able to buy the home that they moved into from our shelter. So wow. we're just a small part of that. And if we don't have support from the outside community, we can have all the great dreams and desires in the world. But it's really the community of, of the Tri-County and Peoria and the Tri-County that make those things happen. Another thing to love about Peoria. Yeah. And salvation, you're right in the heart of Peoria. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, not too far from us right, here downtown. Right. Mm -hmm. um, do you have other locations throughout Peoria? In the Peoria area, we have our downtown campus, and then we have our core community center, which is out on Nebraska, across from the Pearson Hills subdivision, which also is a is a housing complex area. And again, the way the Army tries to operate is we try to be where we're really in the meat of, of the need, you know, just like some of our other friends, like the Southside Mission, you know, they kind of take ownership of the 61605. Mm -hmm. So we try to plug into where <clears throat> we can make the most impact on people's lives. Um, and then in the Tri-County area, we also have a location in Pekin, which has a shelter, which actually is the only shelter in Tazewell County. So that's a unique program that the Pekin Salvation Army offers. And then, you know, sprinkled throughout central Illinois and then into eastern Iowa, we have a total of 23 other locations outside of Peoria where we have a variety of facilities. You know, we're one of the few child care centers left because that's, you know, become something where either other schools are doing before and after care and we don't need to do it. So we're not here just to do programs to run programs. We want to have programs that make an impact. And sometimes where they lose that impact or the need is not there, then we look to divert our attention to other areas where we can still help people. Mm -hmm. Wow. You must work with a lot of great people. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is nice. You know, I, I don't do the direct line service all the time, but I've tried where I have an opportunity to. I love working at the toy shop. I love coming down when we do our Thanksgiving meal, and and then the disaster services is a great way to actually be that person that hands that warm meal out to somebody in need. Um, but it really is. If I have one little bit. To, to play like with the family that I talked about in the shelter. If I if anything I did had one little bit to play with that, man, what a, what a great feeling to have. And I think the people that work for the Salvation Army, we have a lot of people that have worked there a lot of years. It's because it touches their heart. Yes, it's a job. Yes, we get paid to do it. But I think a lot of people there really feel of it more as a calling. You know, for whatever reason I landed here, this is where I'm supposed to be. And I know that's something my wife and I talk about all the time that you know, God puts us, regardless of what we do in our lives, He puts us where He needs us to be. And we may not always realize that. And the nice thing about, for me, working at the Salvation Army is I do get to realize that much more often, you know. And uh, it's, it's really refreshing to be able to walk in and think, well, even if I'm not feeling the best of things today, something's going to happen today that'll kind of say, quit feeling sorry for yourself. You know, <laughs> there are other people that have it tougher than you do. So, yeah. Absolutely. And speaking of doing that, I mean, volunteering can definitely help us get the eyes off of ourselves, right? Sure, absolutely. And help someone else. So how many volunteers are you guys using? <laughs> uh, lots. Uh, we have a couple of events coming up. We do a big feeding program. It's actually a gentleman who's on our advisory board, and he's done this for years. He's, he sponsors a fr the Friday night dinner at our, at our homeless shelter. Okay. Um, and then he does a big thing at Christmas time down at the Civic Center. 1,500 people come. He pays for all of it. Again, the Army gets credit for it because he's affiliated with us, but it's really out of his 
actually his pocketbook and his heart that that meal is provided. So we have opportunities like that. Certainly we have opportunities at our toy shop where people can call and get signed up to do that. And then we still need some bell ringers. You know, we still have bell ringing going on through uh, Christmas Eve. And so we want to make sure that if, if people have a couple of hours, they can do that. And actually, we also have paid bell ringers. So we need a few more paid bell ringers as well. We want to maximize the stores that we have and the, and the hours that we have available. And so sometimes that's, that's an extension of our ministry. People that may not work much uh, else during the rest of the year have an opportunity for two or three weeks to make a little money and, and maybe make their Christmas brighter so they don't have to use services like ours. They have a little money in their, in their bank account to do that. Sure. So what, what areas are you needing bell ringers? And that? Well, out of the Peoria area, we do the kettles in Peoria proper. We do Washington, uh, East Peoria. So those are the main areas that we do out of Peoria. And they actually, if you, if, as a volunteer, you can go to a website, ringbells.org, and it has all of our kettle locations. You can s simply click on the one that you like. You can check the dates that are available. And those are largely broken into larger blocks of time. I think four hours might be the minimum. Okay. So that's a lot for one person to do four hours. So that might be something where a business or a church could get eight to ten folks, and they all take an hour or a half an hour or two hours, whatever the case may be. And then if you're interested or if you know somebody that might benefit from getting a little bit of a paycheck and signing up to be a paid bell ringer, they would just call the core community center center in Peoria, which is 682-8886, and they can kind of walk you through that process of how you could get signed up to do that as well. So, you know, whether it's the weather or people get ill or whatever, you know, you start with a good crew of paid bell ringers, and then it kind of drops off as we get closer into December and then eventually towards the end. So if we can really maximize those locations, especially the ones that really do well, um, that really help us raise some more revenue. So the paid bell ringers, where are they typically located? Are they at a lot of the locations, or do you have specific ones because they're high traffic? Sure. Well, that's exactly right. We look at the traffic. So Sam's Club always re always requests the paid bell ringers, so they know, and it's usually the same guy. Hey, we like Joe, or we like Sally. I sure. mean, um, those folks are you know, animated and, and, you know, dressed festively. So usually the larger stores uh, kind of like those. Okay. Um, so certainly a Sam's Club, uh, Walmarts get a lot of paid bell ringers. Hobby Lobby in Peoria is a, is a fantastic location for us. And that's usually one of our uh, better bell ringers is out there and just very polite, help you open the door, close the door, pull your cart off to the side. So those are the kind of people we're looking for. If you really like uh, giving back because we, I mean, a lot of those people, even the paid bell ringers, yes, they're getting paid to do it and it's not a glamorous job. And there are plenty of days, you know, where it's 20 degrees outside. I'd rather jump in my warm car and head to the office or home and they're out there for six or eight hours. So um, that, that's an opportunity where if you're a little hardier than some of us, uh, you can, you can man a kettle out there. And then we do have a few indoor locations still. So usually um, folks that aren't as uh, primed to do the outside locations, you know, the, the mall still has some inside locations. And there are a few locations where they might have a vestibule or if it's really cold, they'll let you ring on the inside too. So we can't say enough about the partner stores that we have that for years and years, I mean, they not only help us at Christmas time, but they look for other opportunities throughout the year to, you know, to spread the word and, and help raise awareness for the Army. Talk about an easy way for people to... Um volunteer. Mm -hmm. Ringing bells. What's the website again? Yeah. Ringbells.org. And you'll see there, they'll have a whole bunch of states here in the Midwest. So click on Illinois and then Peoria and all of our kettle locations will open up along with available time. So if you see an X through a day, that means it's filled or it's blocked out for, you know, another group that's already signed up. Mm -hmm. But what a great way to grab your kids, family, friends, coworkers, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Teams. Teams. I mean, yeah. whoever Herbs, it may be. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Kids really work well. It's uh, our honorary co-chairs this year. We actually have two couples. So we have Doug and Vicki Stewart and then Henry and Jill Vickery. And so the Vickery's have some teenage kids and a little bit younger. So that always works well. And then the stewards bring their grandkids. And I said, that always works better. You know, a cute little face, maybe ringing a bell. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know for years when my wife and I would ring, I would always bring my nieces and nephews out. And one of them would be silly enough to dance or catch somebody's eye. And that really does help draw a little more attention, you know, because sometimes, you know, you kind of get the head down and just <laughs> maybe if I don't make eye contact with them, I won't feel guilty. But right. um, we just appreciate all that people give and and you know one of the things that the army is going to have to learn how to do better is maybe people don't carry cash they don't carry coins so how do we do some sort of a virtual giving so we do have an option to uh, they can also text 
and make a donation that way. And all they have to do is text Peoria to 91999 and they can make a donation that way too. So we're trying to, you know, catch them on, on both ends. If they have change or bills, we'd love to do that. But if not, they can certainly go online and still contribute and, and make a difference. And it doesn't take a lot, you know, $10, for instance, you think, okay, $10, I could probably give $10. Mm -hmm. That means five plus meals in our soup kitchen. So for someone who doesn't know where that next warm meal is, okay, so I skipped a couple of coffees at my favorite coffee shop and it, and it warms somebody's belly that may, may not know where that next meal is coming from. I think we can all kind of feel better when we, we have the opportunity to do things like that, which I'll be the first to admit, I probably waste, you know, 10, 15 bucks uh, every week or so on coffee or specialty drinks. So sure. it's like, hey, I can do that and help somebody get a meal. I I'd rather do that. It's not going to hurt me any, you know, to skip a couple cups of coffee. Right. So let me, let me see if I got that. You text Peoria to 91999. <laughs> Mm -hmm. three yep. nights. Oh, awesome. Yep. So another easy trying to make way it to trying it. to make it easier, yeah, for folks. Because most people they I mean they feel bad. I mean you ring bells and you see people getting out of their car and right away they're digging in their purse or you can feel them mm -hmm. grabbing their pockets, make sure they have a little change. And kids also help with that too, because they'll tug on mom's sleeve, I want to put some money in the mm -hmm. kettle, you know. Mm -hmm. And and we love having young kids, high school age kids, uh, ring the bells too, and that's the nice thing too. You, I've been with the Army for 19 Christmases now. Wow. And I think the, f the first year in the kettles to the numbers last year, it's always been in the same twenty five dollars to $30,000 range. That's not true around the country. A lot of places have really dropped off. And it's because, again, because Central Illinois is so giving that parents and grandparents teach that as a, as a teachable moment for their kids saying, hey, we can stand here and ring bells for a couple of hours. Yes, our toes are going to get a little cold or our mittens are going to get a little wet, but that means somebody else is going to have a warm place to sleep tonight or a family can afford to take their kids to child care. And it's a great teaching moment to kind of keep that next generation of generosity going. And, and we're just, you know, we're just tickled pink every year about the number of people that want to give back. As a volunteer ringing bells, you're representing the homeless, but you're also representing the generosity of our community. Yeah, yes. absolutely. I mean, it's it's not just the individual couple of hours that you may be giving, but the money that's generated. You know, if we had to pay for every bell ringer we had, you know, if you bring $500 in a kettle, you have to take off the, the pay. Mm -hmm. And we take all of our paid bell ringers to their locations. So we don't ask them to just, they come to our core community center. We give them something to eat, make sure they're properly dressed. And then we actually transport them to where they're going to ring. So the volunteers help because there is no cost on our end. But even the paid bell ringers, you know, we want to make sure that they have a good opportunity, that they get something out of it as well. Sure. Wow. Well, Stacy alluded to something I've been saying quite a bit this the last few uh, episodes is that when I'm feeling down, when I invest in somebody else, it's an investment in me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. again, a great thing that people can do uh, to get involved with Peoria and help. Yeah, there are many great organizations and really what we do at Christmas time, we, we couldn't do a tenth of it without, without volunteers, you know, kind of everybody getting together and, and helping out where they can. Not everybody can do everything, but everybody can do their own little thing, and together it really does make an impact on people that we may never meet. But I know at the end of the day, you can have a warm feeling if you've donated some time, if you've gone to an event, if you've dropped a check in the mail or put a few pennies in the kettle. It doesn't make any difference. It all goes to help people that don't have it quite as easy as we do. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Rich. It's always good to have you on. Uh, Rich Dreger of the Salvation Army. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Always our pleasure to come here, and we appreciate all that you guys do, not only in the neighborhood, but in the community. <laughs> thanks, That's Rich. Cool. Uh, real quick, uh, take a look at our Facebook page. If you want to help us out and make a comment and share this episode, um, thank you for watching. If you're watching on i3 Broadband on our Channel 17 and or uh, WPEO, thanks so much for your time for listening. Thank you. PeoriaLife.com